Today, let's talk about a very important ingredient that people don't like normally talk about, even though it is probably one of the most important ingredients. And that ingredient is patience. Patience. And we were just talking about that. So way to go, Layla, on getting your second customer. And, um, you know, Layla didn't give up. She was patient. She continued to learn. She continued to show up. Just so proud of you. And I just started playing tennis, everybody. So I've got my little uh, tennis outfit, um, not on right now, but I, I have my little tennis outfit. I got my, you know, tennis racket and my new set of balls. And my husband's like, oh, you're a real housewife now. You know, he's just being funny, of course. But, you know, I'm, I'm learning and I'm out there swinging, missing, you know, swinging and missing. And, and I'm like, well, maybe it's my vision, <laughs> maybe my eyesight needs to improve, maybe my depth perception, but I'm not giving up, you know, maybe the first day I, I sucked, okay, the first day I was not that great, but I didn't let that get to me, I didn't, you know, I wasn't embarrassed, even though all the other ladies were just so graceful and just so smooth, and they were twice my age and, you know, kicked my butt, really, but I didn't give up, and so when it comes to leadership, one of the most important things we can understand is having patience with ourselves and having patience with the process. Write down, leadership doesn't develop in a day, okay? Leadership is just like the stock market. Your wins are not going to happen in one day, although I do have a friend that put money into like AMC one, one day, and then the next day he woke up and it had gone from like, $30,000 investment to $100,000, but he didn't cash out. He should have cashed out because like two days later, it went back down or whatever. I mean, that was just a fluke. Stuff like that is not always going to happen in the stock market. The stock market is usually a long-term game. And so is leadership because guess what? We're developing people. We're developing people. So when we have new teammates that join the business and you're like, come on, what's wrong with them? How come they're not like, you know, performance club day one? Why, why aren't they showing up? You know, why aren't they coming early and suited up and bringing guests with them? Why aren't they producing? I mean, that is the wrong thing to say, but sometimes we do say it in our minds, but we need to be patient with people because they're just little seedlings. They're like new tennis players. They need to be taught. They need to be uh, encouraged. They need to have time right? Time, 10,000 hours, as they would say, that book by Malcolm Gladwell, The Outliers, The Beatles didn't, weren't famous the first performance. They had 10,000 hours of performing became, before they became the, the rock stars, 10,000 hours. So in the book of Galatians chapter five, we always hear the famous fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, and peace. Is everybody famous, uh, familiar with the love, joy, and peace? We hear it every Christmas time. We hear it all the time. But did you know that the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace? And then the fourth one is patience. I think they should have added that to it as well. So when we see people... Uh, making Christmas decorations, patience needs to be added on there. That's the fourth one that's on the list in the Bible. And there is a book called Three Feet from Gold by Sharon Lecter. And in this book, it's a part of the Think and Grow Rich series. In Three Feet from Gold, true story during the California gold rush. Did you know that um, there was a man that was digging, digging, digging for months to try and find one of the gold veins here in California. And after months of hard work and getting at it every single day with the hopes of hitting a gold line, he decided to just, you know, there must, it must be dry. All the gold must have already been taken by everybody else. There must not be anything here. So he sold his equipment to a junk guy for like pennies on the dollar, pennies on the dollar. And so that junk guy sat on it for a few months, but 
as soon as the, the new owner of the gold mining equipment started to mine for gold, within three feet of digging on his first day, he struck one of the biggest gold veins in all of California during the gold rush. Can you, can you believe that? The guy who sold him the equipment gave up three feet from gold. He was right there. Had he just gone one more day? Had he just made one more phone call? Had he just gone one more hour? He would have struck one of the largest fortunes that the junk guy ended up uh, getting. So before you decide to throw it in for the day, I want to challenge everybody to just go 1% more. Just make one more call. So before you throw in the towel, just one more call, right? Before, before you're done, just one extra text message. Reach out to one extra teammate. You're just, you're right there. You're right there. And so I can't tell you how many times I showed up at um, our meetings saying, somebody tell me something good that will encourage me to stay for just one more day because I wanted to quit so many times. And I did quit so many times. It's just that I, I kept going, you know, I picked up the shovel the next day and kept moving forward. So um, in the Bible, there's a story of a young boy named Joseph. And Joseph was the youngest of many brothers. And he was the dad's favorite. So dad loved, loved Joseph. And the older brothers were just sick and tired of, you know, him being jealous of Joseph. So one day they decided to beat him up and then sell him into slavery. They sold him into slavery. And most people would have just been like, okay, this is what the rest of my life is going to be like, fine. But he decided that he would still have faith, that he was going to have a better life. So he continued to pray. He continued to do his best at everything. Um, and over a decade later, he ends up earning his way, finding his way through character, patience, integrity, doing good work, now working right hand to the king. So he was originally just a slave in someone's home, but eventually ended up working next to the king. And his older brothers ended up coming to the king asking for grain because the um the entire land was going through a famine and so all of a sudden the brothers walk up and there's joseph holding the clipboard basically i don't know what they had back then but in today's day it would be like the clipboard and the pen you know giving out rations of food to families from the king's storage to feed the families that were out of food the brothers walk up and he's like, he recognizes the brothers, but the brothers don't recognize him. And there he is and he gives them all the grain. And then the brothers finally do recognize him and they fall at his feet and they were just, they felt terrible. Like they had been living with guilt for the last decade because they then realized what they had done. It caused their father so much heartache when they told their father that um, he had been eaten by wolves. They lied to his father instead of telling him that they sold him to slavery. And so Joseph was so gracious. He was now at a higher place than all the naysayers, than all the people that told you that you couldn't do it, than all the people that made fun of you and told you you were wasting your time working after that business, that dream of yours. And there he was. In basically a part of the royalty and was gracious. And he had his moment of glory. He had his moment in the spotlight. So don't get discouraged. Now, let me tell you a story of um, an amazing associate and leader named Chauncey Melvin. Chauncey joined Legal Shield in 2009 and he was running. And he built a great business, um, but life got in the way. He had some things that he had to take care of, personal matters. And 
And um, he decided to keep moving forward, though. He never quit. He never, ever quit. But just continue to keep moving forward. And all of a sudden, oh, now during that time, in 2009, he brought on a gentleman named Kevin. Kevin introduced one of the members from his congregation named Jennifer. And Jennifer joined in 2013. Jennifer has been um, consistent and patiently awaiting her turn, just patiently. And all of a sudden, this year, Jennifer introduces a girl named Gwen. Now, this is 2023, 10 years later. Jennifer has been bringing on people and introducing people for the last 10 years. But in 2023, she brings on Gwen. And Gwen, as of this year, in the first quarter, has over 40 new associates on her team. 40, 4-0 that her and her team have brought on board and they live in the state of Massachusetts. Okay, so license, what license? <laughs> Long story short, 10 years. Okay, would you have waited 10 years for a leader to show up in your organization? A lot of people would have quit by then, but uh, you know that just soared you straight to the top. Now, let me tell you another story. Um, in Chauncey's experience. When he got started, he brought on his son, Chauncey Jr., who met Lou Moya at a party. And in 2009, Lou Moya joined the business. And he was young. How old were you, Lou? Early 20s. 22, 22. But he went out and he ended up living real life, okay? And so kind of put the business on hold while, well, he was, you know, in, in his 20s and now in his 30s, I don't want to say, I don't know how old you are now. <laughs> oh, 30. 32. 10 36. Years. No, you're not 36. I'm 36. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, 36 years old. Well, Lou decides to come back to the business a few years ago, I think in 2021. And now Lou is a senior director. He's on track for executive director this month, this month. And then let me tell you about a, a third leader that Chauncey introduced to the business back in 2012. Chauncey introduced one of his friends who introduced her friend, Candida, who introduced her cousin, Grace Coda. 2012. And Grace this year was the number one recruiter on the team for the quarter out of thousands of associates. Now, it, you know, a lot of people would have maybe given up, but Chauncey decided to stick in the business. And now he's qualifying executive director, which is the highest level in the company before the 15th of the month, every month, effortlessly effortlessly. In the beginning, when he was qualifying back in 20, you know, in the, the 2010, it was, it was a lot of effort for him to qualify. Now it is happening without even trying. So don't get discouraged when things start to look um, like it's not happening fast enough. God is working on you and he is working on your timing. And don't compare yourself to anybody else either. Everybody ha else has different responsibilities, overhead, life circumstances that we're all going through. We all also have different um, levels of personal development and leadership that we need to work on in ourselves as well before reaching the, the places that we want to go. So I want everybody here to stay encouraged and know that you are on your way because the only way to fail is if you quit. And a lot of people quit too soon. I see it way too many times. I mean, had Chauncey quit in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, he wouldn't see the fruit that he's seeing right now in 2023. So I want you guys to stay encouraged.
because literally it feels like now overnight he's going to be a gold executive director overnight to us it seems like overnight right because we're now just hearing about him but he has been patiently awaiting and exercising that very important ingredient in leadership it is patience and we need to have patience with ourselves so what did all these people have in common grace lou jennifer tonsi joseph from the Bible, they didn't give up. They kept moving forward. So it's the month end now. We've got a few months, a few days left in the month. Who here had a goal when you started the month? Who here still needs to fill in the gap to reach that goal? Okay, I wanna encourage you to not throw in the towel right now, because I've thought many times when I was just a few days before the end of the month thinking, I'm just way too far away. I'm just not even going to go for it because I'm so far away. No, you need to get that thinking out of your head because that thinking is a belief that things aren't going to happen. That is of a belief that if you take action, that things are not going to happen. You need to change your thinking and your belief that if you take action, that God will see you knocking, God will see you asking, and that he shall, you shall receive. So I want you to continue moving forward, asking, seeking, knocking, and you will receive. It ain't over until 10 p.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday, April 30th. It's not over. It is Thursday. And a lot can happen in four days, right, Grace, who recruited like six people in one day? You can do that in one day. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like double performance club with rollover. So keep moving forward. I want to encourage you. Tell somebody how many more you need to go. Okay, before you get off this call today, we're going to go to breakout rooms. I want you to tell them how far do you need to go in order to get there? And are you going to commit to clearing whatever else you were going to do? I know you were going to watch that next season of The Mandalorian or the next episode of The Mandalorian. I know you were going to organize your garage this weekend, but I want to encourage you to go for it, okay? Clear the calendar, no more excuses, making it happen. I love that. Grace says, no more TV for me, right? TVs are for EDs, okay? TVs are only for executive directors. <laughs> so I'm proud of you. Keep doing it. Keep moving forward. And we will see you at the finish line.